everyone, I'm Kat the Farmer and today we're in the farm office because I want to talk to you about printing labels. These are the labels that I use to put on my salads, my prepared salads, my salad greens, or any value added product coming out of the kitchen. I'm going to show you my system for printing them here and how I created it through a mix of printer type, label type, and application on the computer so that you can replicate this system if it's helpful for your application. Whether or not you're a farmer or coming from some other industry, this might help you solve the problem of how the heck you're gonna do it. So the problem that I wanted to solve for myself was for some products like my dressings, I knew I was gonna be making a lot of them and I could just order a whole roll and use the same label every time and just label it with a best by date. Okay, that's great. But for other products that I'm only gonna have for maybe a week out of the year or whose ingredients are gonna change or whose blend of different greens is gonna change like in my everything salad mix, I wanted a blank label that I could add in all the details onto. So that's what I've done and I have created a system that's both waterproof and variable and quick to print. It's only 50 cents per 100 labels to print that doesn't include the cost of the label, which depends on how many you order at a time. So I think it's about 39 cents per label for the quantities that I order, which is usually like a thousand or 2000, but there's great savings. The more you order as with anything. So this is one of the end products. It's uh, roasted beets and I'm gonna show you all the details on how to do this yourself. So let's talk about the labels themselves. These are the labels that I order from a company called Lightning Labels. I'm sure you could find them many other places. What I liked about that company was that they already listed two options that were compatible for the thermal transfer printer. Um, and I got samples from them and tested it myself. Uh, they were kind enough to send those along. I'm sure there are many other companies that offer a lamination that is compatible, but you'll just want to test it. it it's nice the the Lightning Labels company has both a matte, this is the matte version of the label, and they also have a glossy that is compatible with thermal transfer. So because we're just printing the background of the label, only the background can be in color because when it goes to the printer, black is the only color ink in there on the ribbon. So I tried to factor that in when I was working with the graphic designer to come up with the label and not rely on any sort of color pop from the text itself. The text was only going to be black and so we knew that going into it. But yeah, just make sure it's compatible. This, um, this is the Lightning Labels uh, thermal transfer mat, but I also purchase just like some regular old craft paper, sort of unlaminated craft paper, just raw paper, and that worked in the thermal transfer printer too. Not as crystal clear as this smooth label worked, but enough to be legible. You'll notice when you zoom in on these labels that the text isn't perfectly crisp and clear, and that's because the limitation of this thermal transfer printer is 203 dots per inch. So it's a little bit grainy. Um, and if you go too small with your text, you're not going to be able to read it. So you're going to want to test that out and allot enough space for the amount of text that you're going to regularly be printing on these labels. And same thing goes for barcodes. If you're printing a barcode, maybe you want to make it as small as possible, but still be readable. So do a test, print your barcode, try it out with a scanner, make sure it works before you get yourself in a jam and end up not having enough space for the information you need on any given label. So let's talk about the printer that I'm using. This is a Zebra GK420T. It was about $150 on eBay and you can buy them new from the Zebra company. It's a thermal transfer printer um, that can also be used for thermal direct. Um, but thermal transfer means that it has this uh, spool of ribbon in it, and that ribbon is made up of like wax and resin. And when it heats up this little bar here, it transfers that. So thermal transfer 
onto the label itself and it sticks to the label. Um, Thermal Direct would mean that you're using this printer without that ribbon and just burning uh, it onto the label, but that only works with a very specific type of label. It's usually the ones that come on your Amazon packages or any old shipping label, um, but that's not what I'm using. Um, this printer is great, but you can only fit labels that are on a three inch core and only have about one inch of labels wound around that. If your spool of labels is bigger than that, it's not gonna fit in the machine and you'll, you could still use those labels, um, but you'd have to feed them in through the back and have them on an external spool. So it takes up much less space in my office to make sure that the printing company makes sure there's only one inch on there. Um, this printer works with four inch wide labels maximum um, and you can use any size down to the tiniest little label sitting in between. It'll sense the breaks in the label every time you close the machine. Um, it figures out what kind of labels in there and stops at the next label. Um, it can print really fast, like one second per label I think is the fastest, and you can adjust the darkness and everything on the computer there. I, Since I got it on eBay, I didn't use the Zebra software. I, I found it online and figured out how to get it, but I could never get it to work with my Mac or the Mac that I was using at the time. So that's the printer I'm using. Um, and I'll show you how I send my graphics to the printer. What I do is I've created documents in Google Draw. So if you have a Google account in your Google Drive, you have the option to create a drawing. So I create a drawing and I set the parameters for the drawing to be the size of the label. Then I'll come in and I'll take my label design and plop it in there. And this just helps me to lay out all the text blocks into the right place so I can know not to put my product title there. I can move it down and I have text blocks for ingredients, for the weight of the product, and for the date it was made in here too. Um, but before I go to print, I need to remove this label out of the back because that's already pre-printed on the label. Anyway, so then I have this Google drawing and I can print from here. Usually what I'll do is I'll let it generate the preview, but then I'll go in and print using print system dialog. So then that's where I select my, my zebra printer and I've created presets for um, my label printing, so the, I test the darkness and I have it set in there. And then the paper size is also a custom paper size that I've entered in there, so I have both my 4x4 label and my 3x5 round label in there. I also have a 2x2 two two label as well, so whichever one I'm printing at the time, I have to select that select the number of copies I want to print, and then when you go to print, it lines up on those things just like so. The only thing that's gonna print is the things that are within the drawing, but you can have all these little text boxes off to the side ready to drag in if need be. So that's kind of a nice little cheat, and I think a really good function of using Google Draw with a Zebra printer. Again, I don't know what the Zebra software is like, so maybe it does that too, but I don't know. All right, that's how I print my labels at home. I hope this video has been helpful to you. If you're trying to figure out a labeling dilemma, feel free to leave any questions in the comments, and thank you so much for watching. Have a great day.